All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be bringing you our third Winter Thoughts video. For today's comment of the day, based on your gut feeling, do you think this upcoming winter is gonna be more snowy and colder than last winter, or do you think it's gonna be less snowy and less cold than last winter? Let us know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Also be sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Let's get straight into things, and first things first, we're taking a look at those sea surface temperatures around the globe. And this is one of the most important things when we're taking a look at a very, very long range outlook or thoughts video in this case, because these are the things that don't change as frequently. Obviously your air temperature patterns and pressure patterns change a lot quicker than sea surface temperature patterns. And these even change sometimes. Now things have really, really changed in the Pacific, especially we see our El Nino region. This has gone more towards the direction of a neutral Enso, even on the side of El Nino. And this has been due to some warming that we've seen in that region. And we'll talk more about that on a chart in a little bit, but let's take a look to the north as well, where our PDO is a little bit neutral because we have that colder area in it, and you take a look, you take Baja, Mexico, and you just take that into the Pacific Ocean all the way to Hawaii, basically, and we do see some colder areas. That looks like a negative PDO to me, but then we look offshore of California, Oregon, Washington, and we see some warmer waters right there, and that's more of a positive PDO to me. And then south of Alaska, we have colder, which is, again, negative PDO. So it's very neutral right now. It could swing either way. It looks more like a neutral, or sorry, it looks more like a negative PDO to me rather than a positive, so that's where I stand at this point with that. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the seven-day change here, and this shows us how things have changed in the past seven days. And as you can see, we've seen a bit of cooling and, and a bit of warming there in the Enso region, which again is our El Nino region. You take South America, Central America, and you take that into the middle of the Pacific, and that's your Enso region. There's, it's not too much more complicated than that. We take a look at our PDO region, which is the area offshore of North America, uh, and we see that there is some cooling going on and some warming out there in the middle of the Pacific, and then some cooling out there in the very, very middle of the Pacific. So it's all over the place with the PDO. I think it is more of a negative PDO, like I said, but it could be trying to maybe be a positive or a neutral. So we'll wait and see with that one. Now let's zoom in to the Atlantic now, because this is important too. We have some warmer water set up over the North Atlantic especially they're closer to the coast and closer to Greenland. I think this could translate into a negative NAO winter if we do see these conditions stay around. That's the big kind of caveat there is that it has to stick around because it, we do have a long time in between now and the winter. Winter won't even be starting until about five months from now. December 1st is when we're taking a look at the beginning of winter, which we're getting rapidly closer. You know, by the time we're taking a look at August, September, we will be able to make winter forecasts with some certainty, uh, with certain things with the sea surface temperatures and things like that. But we're just on the outside of where I would say you can have absolute certainty in some things. At this point, the ENSO and the PDO, the two biggest ones, might I add, they have some major question marks at this point. You might have noticed I kind of just went over those and there's a lot more question marks than answers there. Yeah, that's that's going to lower my confidence a bit at this point in the game. But we do have that warmer water set over the Atlantic, and that's the biggest thing at this point. I think that could translate to a negative NAO. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the seven-day change in the Atlantic, and then we're going to start taking a look at the charts. We're going to take a look at the ENSO charts, and then we're going to take a look at the modeled guidance. Will it be a warmer winter, colder winter? Let's see what they think for now. Now here's the seven day change in the Atlantic and as you can see there has been some warming in that area south of Greenland and offshore of Atlantic Canada. So this is an area that is rapidly warming actually even though it was already warm in the first place. Again a negative NAO uh, could be more frequent when we have these warmer waters in this region. We do see that from time to time. Um, that creates some what you would refer to as Greenland blocking uh, more times than not. It's never going to be constant but it could be more times than not. Let's go ahead and take a look here at our Nino 3.4 index, and you can see that since March, which is on the very left and right now is on the very right, we have been constantly warming. This looks like a stock chart. I mentioned this in yesterday's video. Uh, we see that this has just been constantly uptrending all the way until now, so unless things turn around, it looks like we will be heading in the direction of a warmer, a warmer Enso region at the very least, possibly El Nino not can't be ruled out at this point, even though earlier on in the season we found that to be the most unlikely scenario this winter. Could be 
uh, one of the more likely scenarios. Now, if things keep heading in this direction. Now, for the North Atlantic, we can see that things have cooled significantly since March, but really things look like they could be rebounding. Uh, we're at the, it looks like we hit the very bottom just a little bit ago, and we could be on the way back up again, especially with that warming in the North Atlantic that could bring us back up. Here's that ENSO chart I was talking about, and as you can see, uh, this, this is as of June. I don't know why this uh, model has us at below the 0.0, .0 line, because certainly in the Nino 3.4, we are above that line a little bit. Maybe this isn't the Nino 3. Point no, it says Nino 3.4 sea surface temperature anomalies. So I have no idea why it says that, because that doesn't seem correct at, to me. But it does show that these models, by time we're taking you know, a look at June, July, August, you take a look at those um, letters down there at the bottom, it's the first letter of month. So for instance, DJF, is going to be December, January, February. That's what we're actually taking a look at in this video. You can see, basically, there's a 99% chance we're going to be at a neutral ENSO, according to these models, because almost every single one of them has us at a neutral ENSO. So we're going to continue to track this throughout the coming months as well, but for now, it seems like a neutral ENSO actually is the most likely scenario, in my opinion. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the uh, El Nino, La Nina, and uh, neutral ENSO chances for each month, uh, and it's a different chart you'll see in a moment. And then we're going to move on to the model guidance with actual temperature maps and precipitation maps for the upcoming winter. All right, now here we are taking a look at that chance kind of chart thing, probability chart. And as you can see, the gray is neutral, the blue is La Nina, and then the red is El Nino. For, so for June, July, August, it looks like a 99% chance of neutral. And so, well, actually, it's a to be more specific, an 85% chance. Uh, then July, August, September, it looks like a 70% chance of, uh, an, uh, it's called a, a La Nada, or neutral ENSO. August, September, October, we see those chances kind of going down actually over time, and the La Nina chances especially kind of spiking. So around September, October, November, neutral ENSO, but could be a La, Ni La uh, Nina. Then October, November, December, same story. No, November, December, January, it's La Nina is kind of gaining on the uh, the neutral ENSO there by that point. And then for December, January, February, it's a 50% chance or so, maybe a little bit more that we're at a neutral ENSO. And then a 30% chance that we're at a La Nina and then a 15% chance that we're at an El Nino. So that is how the chances stand according to this. Let's go ahead and take a look at those temperature predictions here. And this is according to our CFS model. And as you can see, for December, it has some warmer temperatures set up over the southeast with some colder temperatures there for the northwestern United States. Take this with a grain of salt, guys. I know everybody wants to see this, but this has changed significantly even over the past uh, month or so since I made my last Winter Thoughts video. So take this with a grain of salt for sure. January, it has some colder air making its way into the eastern United States, especially the more inland you go, even for the central United States, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes. We do have some blues, but if not neutral temperatures, uh, which is going to be cold enough, trust me. Uh, but for the east coast, they're a little bit warmer than normal. This reminds me of last winter, actually, here on this January chart, in my opinion. And then February here is just a total torch, as you can see, warm across the board. So let's go ahead and take a look at the precipitation real quick. And as you can see, it's kind of all over the place, but for December, it has some precipitation up there for the Pacific Northwest, and then for the Ohio Valley and the Gulf states, with some drier areas along the eastern and western seaboards there. That is very typical of a La Nina, so I wouldn't be surprised if this model thinks that's what's going to happen. Uh, but then by the time we're reaching January, you can see the east coast getting in on some of that above average precipitation indicating to me that we could have some nor'easter setting up. Again, the southwest is still pretty dry as well, though. And then by the time we're reaching February, it's kind of the same story, except more of a southern slider pattern potentially there for the southeast and through the east coast. But still, the Pacific Northwest seeing that above average precipitation throughout the entire winter. Anyway, for our confidence tab, obviously we're at a 2 out of 6. We could have been at a 1 out of 6. We probably would, would have more likely been at a 1 out of 6 rather than a 3 out of 6 considering it is June 23rd. But you guys always want me to make these videos and keep you up to date with the most recent winter information coming in. So I always bring that to you guys, regardless of the confidence level. Obviously, I let you know that the confidence isn't the highest. For the comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think the hurricane season is going to be above average or below average? And Jerron Rush said, I definitely say an above average season. And I think that's the more likely out of the two, obviously, at this point. 
Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Lerla Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Flagos, Gary, John Coulisi, Dwight Phelan, and Steven Crenenthal. If you would like to join this patron and stream of the day, you can do so by joining our very awesome Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I'd also like to thank our channel members, Hair Farms one and Catbite as well. You can find that one next to the subscribe button down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to destroy the like button to help me out by just helping that YouTube algorithm. Also, commenting down below helps out as well. Also, be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.